Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. We are part of your flock, but sometimes fail to hear your voice calling us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like sheep, sometimes we wander away and become lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, sometimes there is friction in your flock, and we realize that there are times we have caused it. We are sorry for that. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you be seated, please? Dear God, we we honor our moms today. We honor them because you chose them to bring us into this world. And we acknowledge that the life you give each of us comes through the remarkable women that we know as mom. We also know that for many people, Mother's Day is a difficult day. And so we ask you to comfort those with heartaches today. So we pray for those who have lost their mothers Lord, comfort them in their grief. We pray for those moms who have lost a child through miscarriage, accident, or death. Lord, comfort them. We pray for stepmoms who struggle with blending a family. We pray for those who have had a delayed adoption or a failed adoption, and their heart has been broken. Jesus, comfort them. Comfort those who would like to be mothers, but it just has not happened. Comfort all who struggle with infertility. Wrap your loving arms around them, dear Lord, and give them your comfort on this day. At the same time, you said to rejoice with those who rejoice, so we celebrate with those who have given birth in this past year and with those who have adopted a new baby or child into their home and with those who have fostered children in their home. And we thank you for our moms, our moms in every stage of life, moms of newborns and preschoolers, Moms whose work is never, never done. We thank you for the moms of school-age children who are really more of a chauffeur than a mom a lot of the time. They pack lunches and help with homework every day and never give up as they tackle entire mountains of laundry. We thank you for the moms who feel both the pride and the ache of the empty nest stage. We thank you for moms in their old age who still love us with all their strength. We thank you for those who act as mother to younger women. Lord, in all kinds of ways, 
Our mothers both pass on and preserve your love, and we thank you for that. On this particular Mother's Day, we remember mothers in the Ukraine, mothers who may well have lost children, mothers who certainly have lost sons, mothers who now must provide a home where there's no building left, mothers who must find food for their families where there are no stores and no supply lines left. Comfort them, Lord, and infect that whole area and members of the Russian government with a sense of peace. On this Mother's Day, Lord, we commit ourselves to honoring, to loving, and to protecting all the kinds of mothers in our lives. And we thank you on this day for the gift of mothers and especially for that special person that each of us call mom. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Please join me as we say Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? 
If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that your people will find comfort and inspiration from what I say this morning and that they will hear your truth and not just my words. In your name I pray. Amen. Would you be seated, please? How many of you and this is not a rhetorical question. I actually expect an answer to this. How many of you have tried to make a sheep lie down? No. It's not an easy thing to get a sheep to lie down. And I have four reasons why sheep don't lie down quite often. They come from a book by W. Philip Keller, um, the book is quoted in your bulletin, so you can have a look at that if you want. He is an, came from East Africa and had a large sheep farm out there in somewhere in East Africa. I'm sorry, I forget the country at the moment. And wrote about this psalm from the perspective of a shepherd. So, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Keller says, and I, I think he's probably right about all four points, Keller says that a sheep will not lie down unless these, at least these four conditions apply. The first one is that the sheep is not afraid of predators. There have to be no predators around. And of course the sheep don't know that we are probably its main predator, but aside from human beings, that means dogs and uh, coyotes and wolves and uh, I guess in East Africa, cougars and whatever else eats sheep. And dogs do eat sheep. Most often dogs will kill sheep rather than eat the whole thing. A coyote, of course, will eat the, and a, or a wolf will eat the whole thing. So there've gotta be no predators around. And sheep are skittish. A rabbit jumping out of a hole or from behind a bush will, could quite possibly um, scatter a whole flock of sheep because one starts running and then the one beside it thinks, oh, there must be something wrong, so I'm going to run too, and pretty soon the whole flock is running. You will have seen that if you uh, have been to uh, the, the, um, Britain or Ireland or Scotland or Wales, where they do have sh large sheep farms. The one exception to that, of course, is if you're in a hurry and you're trying to cross or trying to drive on a road where the sheep are crossing. And those ones, for some reason, don't get afraid at all. I don't know why that is, but they don't. They just stand there until the shepherd comes along. So they've got to feel safe from predators, from harm. The second condition is, interestingly enough, according to Keller, and I get this, that they have to feel free from tensions within the flock. Apparently, and this is no reflection on human beings at all, Apparently, some of the older ewes get a little fussy about territory and which patch of pasture belongs to them and which of the younger sheep are allowed to be in that area. And they get quite upset and will get into a whole headbutting 
routine if you have their piece of land and won't move, or if you're doing something, I suppose, that they don't like. And apparently, headbutting can get quite vicious. So there's got to be sort of social tension-free atmosphere for a sheep to lie down. They will not lie down if they're not feeling relaxed enough about social tensions within the flock itself. Interestingly, one of the things that Keller points out is that as soon as the shepherd shows up, the flock calms down. All the social tensions disappear. The third condition is that they have to be free from um, infestation. So fleas and ticks and all kinds of things that, that could bother them. The fourth condition for sheep to um, be comfortable lying down is that they have to be full. So sheep are ruminants. They eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and then they will stand or lie down somewhere and chew the cud. And you will see cows doing that as well. So if this psalm is talking about the Lord is my shepherd, how do those particular pieces of information apply to me and to you? Because that's what the analogy here is, is about. David, King David of Israel, who is the supposed writer of this psalm, is saying that the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. That doesn't mean the Lord, you know, grabbed him by the legs and wrapped his legs up and made him lie down. It, he, the Lord is providing the right uh, things for him to feel comfortable lying down. What are the predators that we're afraid of? What are the predators in your life that cause you, all of us, not just you in particular, but all of us, to be nervous enough that we can't lie down. I think you've all had the experience of not being able to shut your mind off when you go to sleep. There's a predator for you. Your mind keeps thinking about, oh, what's gonna happen when? Or what if, whatever. And then you can't sleep. That's a predator. It has come after you and its mere presence is enough to unsettle you and cause you not to be able to lie down and sleep. What are the little pestering, annoying kinds of things like fleas and ticks that bother us? How about credit card companies that just won't leave it alone? How about duct cleaning services that always call at dinner time. Those are the kinds of things like fleas and ticks that they don't kill us, but they sure aggravate us. And if you, if you let it, those kinds of things can ruin your morning. If you then have to go and work with patients or you have to work with, I mean, medical patients or whatever, if you have to go and uh, have lunch with some friends or maybe even a, a meeting that's going to be a little challenging. Something like that in your life is niggling enough that it may set you on edge for a whole day. What are the ways in which we are fed? But this isn't about food, is it? Because I think this is about being fed physically, which we all are, but it's also about being fed emotionally. It's about being fed spiritually. Consistently, Anglican churches rate very low on their spiritual lives. When people look at Anglican parishes, the thing that people rate the lowest is our spiritual life. And yet the thing that people rate the highest on their needs is a spiritual life. Interesting juxtaposition. That, those are national surveys, by the way. We need to be fed in more ways than just physical food. We need to be fed by the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We need to be fed by the presence of each other, other people in this parish and other parishes like it who are on the journey with us. Those joyous moments when we can get together and laugh and have a good time. The Wednesday morning group is, is one of those that functions here. There are other groups that function like that. 
I just had a particularly good time at last Wednesday's uh, session. So I have now forgotten whether I did all four points, but I've got examples for all of them. That's enough for now. You get the point. This isn't just about a sheep. This is about us and what we need in our lives to feel comfortable. But it doesn't always feel like that because somebody got angry at you, because you're not getting fed spiritually or emotionally or intellectually, because there are predators in the world, not that they're going to kill you. I sometimes talk about spiritual vampires who want to consume all of your energy and give nothing back. And I've had to say to a few people, when you run into someone like that, that's not a friendship. Friendship is a two-way street. When it doesn't feel like that, I want to suggest to you that the problem is not that the offer isn't there for those things. God always offers those things. The problem, I think, sometimes is that we don't recognize what's being offered or how it's being offered. Or even worse, and I've done this so many times, I don't agree with it. I don't like what God's offering, so I'm not going to agree with it, and I'll just go ahead and do my own thing. And all of a sudden, I find I am cast down. A cast down sheep is a sheep that has rolled over somehow onto its back. And you may or may not know that a cast down sheep cannot get up by itself. They just lie there on the ground with their legs and their arms up in the air, and they need help from a shepherd. So when I find myself cast down, I think, what is it I'm doing wrong here? I've rolled over, I can't, I can't do this, I, I, you know, I thought everything was okay. And it's not that my fault, it's my fault necessarily in a bad way. Sometimes I just miss the offer for green pasture. So here's the thing. I think that God provides unconditionally to all of us everything that we need in this life. We may not think that, but I think it's true. It may not meet our particular expectations of the moment, but it's still true. The disconnect, I think, comes when we fail to see the things that aren't for us. Oh, they may be attractive and the advertising business may have made a, a wonderful job of convincing you that you need it, but they're not for us unless they're in God's plan. And that's the thing. The offer is there for green pastures. The offer is there to be pest free. The offer is there to be well fed. The offer is there to be out of danger. It's our own stuff that gets in the way of receiving it. This psalm has an awful lot to say about who we are, but more importantly, who God in Christ always is, the good shepherd. Amen. Let us pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, watch over us today in all we face and experience. Never leave us or forsake us and journey with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you know us as no one else knows us. Guard us and keep us as you guard and keep those whom we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, we pray for the sick and the lonely, for the anxious and the bereaved, for those whose pain is beyond our comprehension. We stand with them and commend them to your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, we pray for the doctors, nurses, and carers in hospitals and homes, and for all who serve the needs of others. 
May the example of living compassion inspire us in our care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you know the depths of our heart and the fears which are ours. Speak into the depths of our heart and calm our fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you know us by our name and our identity is not hidden from you. Gather us to yourself as a shepherd gathers the sheep that we might know your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with this little part of God's flock of Jesus' flock always. Amen and happy Mother's Day.